Okay, so yeah, so, so, so I work for Neo, so I'm a developer there. Um, but this talk is not really about anything, any, anything like technical about Neo, it's, about, it's about more, about, more about using it. Uh, and so the use cases, uh, what we see a lot of people doing is building, uh, or at least using it as part of building a recommendation engine for whatever it is they're going to recommend. So um, the example, uh, example of what I'm going to show that you could use it to recommend is meetups that you might be interested in attending. So obviously you've already picked one uh, to come to today, but there are, there are I'm sure you, if you're on uh, the meetup website, there are loads of them uh, every day, that all different, all different groups. Uh, so we're gonna, we'll have a look at a little bit of the data set. So that's the data set we're going to work with. Um, and if you use Meetup for a while, you probably notice actually they already do uh, some recommendations already. Um, so these are, these are some of the ones that I get. So, uh, so on the left hand side, uh, they kind of make recommendations like collaborative filtering type thing, uh, where they're trying to suggest, well, people who are in this Meetup, so if you go to the, uh, the uh, London Docklands Meetup, it might say, oh, people in this Meetup are also members of these Meetups, for example. Um, they'll also send you out uh, emails for meetups that you uh, might be interested in going to. Uh, they also suggest you groups you might be interested in going to. And then on your homepage, you'll get uh, something like that, which will be like, hey, here's what's happening next week. Uh, here's a selection of events. And they're hoping, I guess, that you're going to go and uh, go and click on them. Uh, their revenue model is basically uh, that people who host the groups uh, pay to host the group. So as long as they keep people renewing the hosting for that group by having people coming to their events, uh, then that's a success. So they want people to go to, go to events. That's their, uh, that's their goal. Uh, and it might be different, like depending on what you're, what you're recommending. Obviously, that your goal will be something different. It might be selling something or getting people to, uh, to view things or whatever it is. Um, so for the meetup data, so there are a few things we can recommend. So these are these are some of the ones I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do all of them, or we could be here for for, for ages. Um, but kind of just skimming across the data, you can kind of see there's probably three sort of things you can suggest. You can suggest a group, people in the you're in the Docklands Java group, you're in the Closure group. How about this group? Um, so you could suggest a group. Uh, you could suggest topics to follow. So people uh, say what topics they're interested in in groups. Um, sort of advertise themselves as being about some topics. So for example, this group obviously would say it's about closure. It probably mentioned the JVM. And then you could do up to 15. So you can do some other ones. Uh, and then the most direct one that they do uh, is actually telling you events that they think you might be interested in. So for example, maybe this event would be recommended to some people uh, or other events that are on other days of the week. Uh, and I'm going to do it from the perspective of you uh, or, or me if I was, if I was attending something. Um, and so equally, you could do it the other way around. You could do it. You could imagine you could do it as the as the organizer. It could be as Alex, so like working out uh, what what keywords shall I advertise my meetup as, and what days shall I host it on to get the most people to come. But we'll do it. So you could do it that way around. Uh, we'll do it the other way around because that's a bit easier to relate to. Um, so we're going to have a look at two different ways of uh, filtering data. So effectively, recommendations is just is is a fancy way of doing searching. Uh, so you've got a whole space of things that you could suggest to people to look at. Uh, that's effectively what you do when you go with the search engine. Uh, and we want to try and suggest some things that make it more likely that people are going to be happy with our suggestion, happy with our search, uh, and more likely to click on it, I guess, most of the time. Uh, so we're going to look at two ways. So content-based filtering is kind of uh, recommending items to people based on what they've looked at in the past. And it's looking at the what makes the content similar to, to, to each other, the, the bits of content. In this case, the meetups or the groups, what makes them similar. Uh, and then collaborative filtering is the idea that um, we want to find people who are similar to this user. So who is similar to me, who is similar to you, and we'll suggest what their, uh, what their activities are. So the groups they've been joining, the, the meetups they've been attending, and, and so on. Uh, hopefully, you get the idea as we go on, uh, how this works. Uh, but effectively, uh, if we were going through like a simple example, content-based filtering would look like this. Uh, so we've got to find some item characteristics. So in our case, the meetups would be, well, they've got topics in common, uh, or uh, yeah, that, that's the most obvious one. So we want to find uh, ones that have similar topics, uh, and then we're going to suggest those similar ones. And obviously, it's a bit of a feedback cycle. We can go and see, well, did that actually work? Did anybody actually go and follow, follow any of our recommendations, or were they terrible? And then we can, we can tweak it. Uh, so for example, uh, movies of similar genres would be an example of that. You watched this movie. The, here's a load of other movies that are also uh, romantic comedies, or whatever your, uh, your preferred genre would be. Uh, collaborative filtering is, is kind of kind of a different take on the on, on recommendations. So here we're going, 
uh, well, you've done a load of things. Um, there's some other users who have behaved in a similar way to you, uh, and they also did some other, they, well, for example, uh, you bought this product, some other users bought some other products as well as buying that product. Let's go and suggest to you uh, to, buy, to buy those ones at the, at the simplest level. Uh, so for example, finding people who have similar musical tastes uh, or uh, equally, I suppose, similar meetup tastes would be for, for us. Um, so I'm going to drive it sort of down from a, from a simple question and I'll, and I'll sort of go through like a, the whole workflow of how you might uh, do this using Neo. Uh, and generally what we see is people kind of combining Neo with something else to do this, but, but in these examples I'll just use Neo for, on its own for simplicity's sake. Um, so here we're going to do, uh, as a member of the Neo4j London group, uh, I want to find other groups similar to that, so I quite like the Neo4j London group, let's say, um, and I want to go uh, and join those groups. Uh, and, and the idea would be they have some meetups that I want to go to events or events that I want to attend. Um, so the first thing we've got to work out is what makes groups similar in the first place. So we've got these groups and how, how, what makes them, how, we, how are we going to know that we've found a similar group? Uh, so one way of doing this is actually to look at the topics that they advertise. So on each page, you might have noticed this, they, on the left-hand side, they'll have a what we are about. Uh, and when you create a group, you go and say, hey, we have... Uh, we're about this topic, this topic, this topic, and you can do 15. So each one tends to have 15 things. Uh, so for example, the Neo4j one says, hey, Neo4j, Java, uh, data mining. Uh, whereas if you come over here and look at, say, the data science one, they've got, um, uh, they've got data mining as well, so those are in common. But they've got machine learning, data analytics, text analytics, natural language processing. So they, they'll have topics that are specific to them, uh, but gen generic enough that probably another group is going to share some of them. Um, and so this is an this is a graph this is an example of a graph. Like how would we go and model this problem? And you can probably imagine how you would uh, take on this problem if you were doing a, in a relational database. I'm sure you you would have an idea of what tables do you need. Uh, so this is the this is the graph a graph equivalent of that. And it's very simple at the moment because all we've got all we need to do all we need to have is groups and and the topics that they have, and that's all we need to make this recommendation. And obviously it's very it's a very simple one to start with. Uh, so just to go through the lingo, so actually this is the, the same as what Chris had in his talk. We've got nodes. Uh, in this case, nodes uh, don't mean computations. They are the bits of data. Uh, so here you can see they are uh, groups or topics. Um, those would be the equivalent of the records uh, in your relational database. So anything that's a record, that's a reasonable, um, reasonable to map that to be a node. So, so those are our bits of data, and that's obviously going to that will be familiar. Um, then we've got uh, connecting them, uh, relationships. Uh, if you did secondary school maths, uh, you probably know of those. Uh, those would be uh, edges. Um, so we found the word relationship is less scary <laughs> to people who don't have a maths background. So uh, relationships connect uh, your nodes to each other. Uh, and that is effectively the join of the SQL query. Uh, so in, in SQL, the, the join would be done at runtime, or be, if you were creating a materialized view, it would obviously be done, be done when you created the materialized view. Uh, in the graph, it's computed when you write. So, so when you write, you write the nodes and you write the relationships. And I'll show an example of how to do that, but this is effectively uh, stored, so it's persisted. Uh, which, and the idea is that um, it's intended for the types of queries where you have lots of these relationships to follow. So it's, inter it's very good at querying, uh, yeah, run running queries that, that have a lot of, uh, a lot of relationships to uh, traverse. Uh, so that, those are the first two bits of lingo. So we've got nodes, uh, bits of data, relationships, and they're connecting them and explaining, well, how are the bits of data linked to each other? Uh, and you'll notice they always have a direction, but we can choose to ignore the direction when we search it. So that's not, uh, it's a part of the model, but it's, it's not, not necessarily restricting. Um, labels are the next thing. So these are the, these are the names sort of inside the nodes. Uh, and these are for grouping uh, the nodes, so like giving, effectively allowing us to very quickly go and find them. Um, you could consider these to be quite similar to a table name um, uh, in a relational database, but the difference is you can have multiple of them. Uh, you don't have to have one if you don't want to, uh, so it's not, not a complete uh, uh, comparison. Uh, and then finally, you probably noticed we had, we've missed out one thing. Uh, these are properties, so these are the equivalent of the columns or fields on a uh, relational table. Um, and here we're only using them to specify the name. So we're saying, hey, the group has a name, the topic has a name. Um, one interesting difference from a relational database is that um, if you have, just because I have two things which are, are a group, that doesn't mean we have to all have exactly the same property. So the, this, there's no like forcing schema on you. Uh, so that, that's a bit different as well, uh, if you're new to it. 
Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, we'll have a look. Let's say we want to write a query to find similar groups to Neo4j. So this is the Cypher query language that, uh, that Alex mentioned. And we'll, go, we'll go through this query. Um, so we'll start at the top. Uh, so the first uh, bit of lingo is uh, match. And that's effectively saying, hey, I want you to go and find me something. So go and find this pattern. So we call, uh, we call this whole thing here as a pattern uh, from there to the end. Uh, and in this case, the pattern is saying, so if we go from the left to the right, uh, we're saying there's a node here. So this is kind of representing a circle, uh, or this circle here. Uh, so we're saying there's a, a node. Uh, called, we're going to name it group. So that first group is, a, is just a name. It's just a, a variable name. Uh, this one here says it's a label. So I need there to be a node um, with a group label on it. Uh, and then the next thing needs to be uh, a relationship called has topic going to another node, which we're going to call T. Uh, then we're going to follow another relationship kind of coming into the T uh, called has topic. And that's going to get us an, uh, a node that we'll call other group. Uh, so kind of in English, we've got our group. Uh, and this one's uh, anchored to the Neo4j group. So from the Neo4j group, go and find its topics. Go and find the other people who have that topic. Right? So that's what we're up to here. We've done the first two bits. Um, if there's an index on the, on the group name, uh, then we're going to use it in the query. So, so uh, behind this query, when you run it, there's a compiler uh, that has statistics stored for, uh, across all of these, uh, these different uh, bits of the, uh, of the query. So it stores uh, cardinalities of the nodes, the labels, the properties. And so it will work out a, a plan uh, for you so you don't have to do any of that. Uh, so we're going to get to there. Um, so now we've got a load of groups. Um, I thought I'd just do a little bit of a, a, little bit of a segue. So, um, indexes are used a little bit differently uh, in a graph than in a, in a relational database. So uh, on the left-hand side, uh, it's kind of an example of a relational database, oh, sorry, relational query rather. Uh, and when you're writing your queries, you're typically doing either index scans, table scans, taking those results, sets of results, uh, and combining them together and doing set operations to come up with, well, what is common across, across these joins uh, typically? And hey, here's the result set. Uh, in a graph, it's a little bit different. Uh, so we're saying, well, I'm only going to use the index to find uh, the starting point. Uh, so for example, in the, in the previous query, to find the Neo4j group. After that, there's no, uh, no indexes used. So effectively just pointer chasing between, uh, between the nodes that have relationships between them. Um, and so the, the, the common, uh, I suppose, I'm going to say mistake, or well, maybe, maybe not mistake, uh, is that when people see a Cypher query and it's running slowly, they're like, cool, I will index everything. And it makes absolutely no difference um, most of the time. Uh, and so this is the this is the diagram that kind of explains well, why 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 didn't it make a difference uh, when in the relational database it, it would have definitely taken up a lot of disk space to do it, but probably the query might have become faster. So th that's a, that's a, that's a slight difference. Uh, so we go back again. Um, so what we can also do uh, instead of having a where you can bring this in line uh, when it gets compiled it comes to exactly the same code so there's no difference between those two those two versions of having the this is a where or having it in line and then what we're doing here so this is a bit different um, this would normally be the select uh, in SQL uh, whereas in Cipher it's uh, it's in the return at the end so you specify what do you want to what do you want what fields do you want to come back uh, so here we're saying uh, and there's one other difference which we're going to get to. So I'm saying I want to get the other group name. And then what we're doing here is an implicit uh, grouping. So in, in SQL, you'd often have to say, well, what is your grouping key? If you're going to do uh, a count, so count kind of does as it says, counts up how many times does this come up? Uh, you, so it uses this as the key. So this is the implicit group by key. Uh, so count goes, well, how many times is the other group showing up? I.e., how many topics does it have in common? Uh, and collect. Uh, grabs all those topics and puts them in an array. So what you get back at the end um, is something like this. So this is a bit, a little bit gray. Uh, I'll go through what it say. Uh, but effectively, you get, uh, so Python for Quant Finance, it says it's got eight topics in common, and then it lists all of them in here. Um, I can probably actually show that. I'll, 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 do, I'll do a quick, uh, I'll quickly grab this, and I'll show you what, it, what does it look like in the, in the Neo4j browser. So, so this is the. This is the Neo4j browser, in case you haven't seen it before. Uh, so when you, when you run Neo4j, and you can run it on the Mac, you can have it as a, uh, like a DMG and stuff, which is a normal application, or you can run it from the command line, depending on what you prefer. Uh, and this one I've already loaded in the data, so, um, so it's already kind of got a schema there for us. 
Uh, and this is, I guess this is, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. This is reasonably similar to what you'd get in your SQL Management Studio or Squirrel or PHP My Admin or whatever, whatever your tool of choice is. Um, you get uh, kind of an overview of, what, of what's in the database. Uh, by the way, you can see a bit of test data that I've put in there. I always use the word has. Uh, but in this data set, what we've got is we've got some events, and you can click on them, and it will run a query showing you what's in there. Um, and you get back a, a little visualization, so we can kind of go and have a look at that and say, hey, what do we want it to show? So we can, um, we can change the size, we can kind of mess around with this. Uh, this is a, sort of a developer exploration tool, uh, if you like. Uh, so we get the PHP meetup, we've got a load of the London web design ones. It, it, it's not ordered, this re result set is not uh, ordered at all, so all it's doing is showing, uh, it's just showing anything, it's just taking a random 25. Uh, and we could do the same, so we could say, hey, let's have a look at some topics, and we can get back a load of topics on there. Chrome's not liking me, oh, there we go. Uh, we could change. We could change the color. We could put those in red if we like, um, and we could do the same for the relationships. We can do the same for the property keys. So this is like your overview of what is in the database, and then into this bar at the top where it's been pasting queries for us. So this is a really simple query here that it's been writing for us. It's just find me. So hey, go and find me a pattern. Oh, the, what is the pattern? Node, uh, just a node with a topic label on it. Find me twenty-five of them. So if we put our query in here. Let's just have a look what it looks like. So just to remind ourselves, so we're saying, uh, I want to find the NFJ group. I want to find um, the topics that it has. I want to find other groups that have that in common and then return them. Uh, so we can run that. Oh, what have I done? Uh, oh, it doesn't like, uh, it doesn't, I think in this version I've got, it doesn't like this. So let's take this out. Um, so there we go. So we get, um, so we get about the Python for quant finance. We get some analytics, uh, the Analytics Club London. Um, we get a few others. Uh, let's change it. What happens if we, let's have a look for another group. What group can we do? Uh, let's do Hack Wimbledon. I don't know if I've loaded the Docklands one in here. Oh, maybe we could have a look at that one next. Uh, let's have a look at the Hack Wimbledon. So I'm not sure what's, what that's going to come up with. Um, so what have we got? We've got a few other ones with London in the name. The, Lo the Cambridge, the London Cambridge Coding Academy. Got a bit of 3D printers. So these have 11 topics in common. So I suppose we could, um, if we, uh, what you can also do uh, is we can make this create a graph for us. So we can say, is that going to do it? Oh no, that just, there we go. There we get back just those. Okay, let's have one of them. So we put the topics in as well. That's not going to be so happy. Maybe I'll leave it at that. Um, but basically, on this view here, um, so we've been looking at the text view. Uh, actually, no, we haven't. We've been looking at sorry, we've been looking at the rows view. Um, so if you if you return text, it will show you the rows view of things and just structure everything into a table. Uh, if you give it enough to cr to create a visualization for you, it will draw a graph. Uh, in this case, it's a very boring graph because it doesn't. Yeah, we haven't given it enough information to connect the, the bits of data together. Um, in the background, it will show you what it. Uh, <clears throat> what did it actually do? What API did it call? Um, and so I'm playing with kind of an unreleased uh, cut of the latest version, which has uh, its own protocol called Bolt. Hence, that's what that's what that means there. So it's saying, hey, I sent this query. Uh, these are the records that I got back. And if you were using this, so this is using the JavaScript driver of Neo4j. Uh, if you were in your own language, they all kind of have obviously they all work with the same protocol and then they, they have their idiomatic way of processing the result. But this is what you get back uh, if, you, if you have a look at it. Uh, so that's a query and we can kind of mess around. We could go and, I suppose we could go and let's go see if we can find the Docklands one. Um, so where stops. Oh, maybe we'll do contains. So what do I do, London Java, would that be enough? Should do it, let's see. There we go, okay, so let's try. Let's see what that one's gonna come up with. So we can stick that in there. Oh, I've got to change that back on. There we go. Uh, so there we go, so it's saying, I'll put it more on the screen. So top, based purely on the topics that are advertised for this group, these are the similar groups. Um, and they're all, I mean, they're all, they're all kind of developer-related developer in, some, in some sense. 
I don't know, this is probably actually not that great because I because people tend to put very general uh, uh, topics on there. So you end up with uh, things that maybe not necessarily related being uh, being classified as related. Um, but anyway, that's our start. What have I done now? Uh, anyway, I can go to here if that I seem to have killed that PDF viewer. Where are we at? Um, so we've got up to... Oh, hang on a minute. It's not going to be so fun if you can't see the pictures. I'll just kill this. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to have a little bit of a look at closure. So that's our little bit of an intro to uh, Neo4j. Now let's do a little bit of an intro to closure. So where are we up to? So we've got we've done the results. We've gone through the query. We've got some results. So um, so the closure library uh, is from the how, actually how many people are familiar with closure or have written any closure before? Uh, okay, a few. Um, so okay, so right, so well, we'll do an introduction to Clojure as well then. So if uh, you've never seen Clojure, uh, there is a set of libraries, and a lot of them work for the for the uh, like as database clients uh, under this uh, organization umbrella, let's say uh, umbrella slash organization called Clojure Works, and they have lots of different libraries, and so they have a, a, a driver for the Mongo database at MongoDB, they have the one for Clojure. Um, the name they've chosen for this is really bad to Google, uh, as you might imagine. It probably gets you, I guess you're probably on an NHS watch list uh, if you try and find this and you've forgotten the name, because uh, it comes up with some very different results than you might imagine. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this is the library, uh, and it's quite easy to use. So um, when you're using Clojure, you typically have a project file, and you can uh, in, pull in dependencies quite similar to how you would in, in Maven, uh, for example, um, as uh, Chris showed in his presentation using Maven. Um, and so you literally just say, well, this is, the, this is, what, this is where, this is, the net, this is the organization, this is the, the name of the, the, the package that I want to pull in, and this is the version. Uh, so at the time I did this, I think this was the latest version. Well, it claims to be even actually more current than the version of the print screen that I've got, uh, which is quite impressive. Uh, and so this is, here's, some, here's an example of some closure code. So it's not, uh, so we've got, we, we, hopefully it's not, it's not too complicated, even if you've never seen it before. Uh, but as uh, Alex said, we have all the brackets. Um, so but as, as it's a list, uh, everything goes, uh, effectively is treated as a list. Uh, and so if we go on, this is a really simple example of making a connection to Neo4j. And we're going to use it to do, to do a query on the next slide. Uh, so effectively, uh, line one, uh, this is the equivalent of your import. Uh, in, uh, we're saying, I want to import uh, some package. Uh, in this case, Closure Works Neocons REST, uh, and I want to refer to it as NR. So we're just aliasing the import. Uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure you can do aliasing of imports in Java, although I've never actually uh, never actually done it. I'm sure I've, I've seen it done. Uh, so, but here we're just saying I want to re refer to it as NR, and then here, so def con is. I didn't really didn't even think. I've never even said that aloud before. Um, so def con is defining. Um, effectively, we're just saying there's a variable. Um, so we're defining a variable, um, we're going to call it con, and what it's going to do when we call it, it's going to go uh, nr, so that one, connect, uh, and then there's the path to Neo4j, so that just happens to be where you connect to Neo4j on. Um, we're localhost, so if you were connecting remotely, obviously you would put in the IP address there, uh, and if I was being cleanly, I probably wouldn't have put my password in there, but now you know it, it's password. Uh, and then... Um, <laughs> So at the moment, Neo4j uh, there's only it only has one user. The, the next versions will be working on doing uh, sort of more banking friendly security. But at the moment, uh, Neo4j uh, and password uh, is my example. Uh, okay, so we've got the connection. Um, so now uh, we can actually run the query. So before we were running the query uh, just from the browser, so we were just pasting it in, and it was going off and using the JavaScript driver to do it. Here we're going to get uh, we're going to get the closure driver to do it instead. So we're kind of just instead of typing into the browser, we're going to type it into closure. Um, so up here we're just importing some different libraries. So we've got a cipher one, uh, and this is a library uh, a closure one. And I'll show you what I'm using it for in a second. Uh, it's just to make some some things a bit easier. Um, but we're going to do a simple query. So this is even simpler than what we did on the previous slides. So we're just saying, hey, find me five, uh, some groups that have some topics, and I'm going to tell you what the topic is. Um, return the group, uh, give me five. So up here, this is uh, a parameter. So 
uh, Cypher takes in parameters, uh, and the idea there is that um, if you're running the, pretty much the same query and all you're varying in your application is the parameter, so for example, uh, I want to go and find topics that are Clojure, I want to go and find topics that are NeoFJ, I want to go and find topics that are Java, uh, the, qu the, the query uh, plan can be cached and just reused with whatever parameter you pass in. Uh, and then the last thing we're doing down here is executing it. So what we're saying here, uh, this is, uh, I forget the name of the function, effectively it's just, I'm using it so that we can say apply this, so run this bit of code, uh, and this one does, uh, so from Cypher, run this query, the connection, remember from the previous slide, uh, take in the query, and then this is a map, uh, or a hash, uh, which has the key topic, and then we'll put a topic in here, and that'll go into there. And then this is keyword I uh, keys is just making it so that we can use a keyword to look up uh, in the map instead of a, a string, which is a little bit more uh, convoluted. Uh, and then all we're doing here is saying, from the result set, go and get me uh, the data. So this actually, uh, I suppose the result for this is it actually has a map which has group and then on it has data and then all the uh, properties sit on there. Uh, and I'll, I'll do an example, but this is what it would look like if we ran it with the keyword closure. So we run it and you get back something that looks like this. Um, and it's just a map of things. Um, so that's, that tends to be the default. That's, that's what Cypher gives back. Uh, and that's pretty much what, what a, lot, a lot of programming in Clojure will tend to be using maps to do stuff. So we've got, the, and so it goes key, created, value, sometimes time, key, rating, value, number four, uh, and so on. Uh, and we can do the same. We could change it to do Neo4j meetups. Um, I think we'll do a little, I'll show you a little example. So uh, the hardcore uh, closure programmers are all about using, um, are all about not using light table and about using Emacs. But I am not very good at remembering all the keystrokes for Emacs. But if you're better, at, uh, better than that at me, then you can probably probably try that and then you'll have way more street cred uh, than me. Uh, but effectively, this is, the, this is the code. Let's see how this is gonna get on. So we can, um, we can basically just run code inside, the, uh, inside here and it will put the result next to where you're, next to where you are. So that's what we get. This, this is, by the way, this is, this is what the whole thing looks like. This is a bit, uh, it's a bit full on, uh, but effectively what we're doing is we're going in there and saying, hey, I wanna find, I wanna get the, Effectively, what I want to get out is in, is in that data thing there. So this query here does it a bit a bit more nicely, uh, and you can run these things. So all I'm typing is uh, I'm just doing effectively Control Enter or Command Enter, uh, and it prints next to it what would happen if it, what what does it actually happen if I run that that bit of code, uh, and so I could change this. I could change this to say Java. Let's see if that's going to work. Uh, and then I get some other ones. So there we go. So it's saying. Find me all the groups that have the topic Java. So I get back the Java community, the Neo4j group, because that is a Neo, Neo is a written, in, written in Java. Uh, and we get back, what else do we get back? Epic London tech jobs. <laughs> Got to get along to that one. Uh, wow, what's that? Boolerang, the Boolerang IO. Uh, and we could change this, we could say. Well, the, the most popular meetups in London tend to be data science ones. Let's see what that comes up with. There's not so many, only a few. Um, but then we can also run our suggested groups query. So remember we had the suggested groups query before, so we can define that. Uh, and then we're gonna run it down here. And this time we're gonna print the output uh, down into the console at the bottom. Um, I don't know how to make that bigger, but effectively. So instead of having, remember we saw it in the browser, so now at the bottom of the screen you can see we've got the Python for Quant Finance and it gives us a score. Topics in common, we get the topics, so it lists you the topics, so you could go and use that on your page. Uh, we get the analytics club, and we get a few other ones in there as well. I didn't realize how many times this thing tries to connect to the internet to pull down things. I don't even know what it does with them. Um, I'm gonna go, hang on. So am I in? Okay, right, so back to the presentation. So uh, so then, right, so I don't, I, I um, uh, I suppose an enthusiast of, of Clojure rather than somebody who, who knows it really well. Uh, so I wanted to build a little web app uh, on top of that data set to, um, to sort of show, to see how, well, basically to see how difficult, how difficult it is to go from, hey, I've got this uh, database query language, I can do some queries on it, to, hey, here's a Clojure application doing the same thing. Um, so I googled 
how would you do? Uh, how would you build a collision web app? Uh, and the framework uh, that came up uh, on top of Google search was uh, one called Luminous. I have no idea if this is the most hipster thing. It might have been a few years ago. I expect it's not now. Uh, you've probably got to use some cool uh, JavaScript framework uh, these days, otherwise not worthy of a web app. Uh, but effectively, it's really easy uh, to, to get started. You just run this. Uh, it creates you the outline of everything. Uh, creates uh, all, some dummy, dummy uh, URIs for you to use, some dummy templates. Um, and you, uh, the, the, it's just three commands, and then you're, then you're running. Uh, so that was quite nice, because uh, I, I basically have no idea. Uh, how, 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 would you, how would you build up a Closure Web App otherwise? Um, but it makes it quite easy. So um, I've got a home page. Um, so this is how you define uh, what, well, what happens when I go to the home page. So localhost 3000, uh, I'm going to call a function called home page. Uh, so that's it. Um, and then we can define, well, what is the home page function? So this is my home page function. So I'm saying I want you to render a layout. Um, so this, is, this gives you all this, all, this, all this scaffolding as well. So I'm going to lay out uh, home.html, so that's a, just a HTML page. Uh, and then I'm going to pass in, uh, and this is a map again, so, but, and then you can refer to those uh, variable names. So I want you to return some suggested groups. Uh, and I've got this defined somewhere else. I've got a logged in user. I just made it me. Uh, and some suggested events. Uh, and then we're going to go and use the query for that. Uh, so that's fine. So we've got a home page, uh, and it's going to put some data onto it. And then. This is what the suggested groups looks like. So this is, this is pretty similar to what we've just seen in the, in the light table. Uh, so I'm going to collect a result uh, by executing a query. Uh, and then once we've got the result, we're going uh, to iterate over it. And we're going to calculate a score for each row. So I thought uh, in, the, in, the, in the browser, we're obviously doing some quite simple scoring. I thought we'll do some more uh, interesting scoring in Clojure. And it, it's quite a nice language for doing that, as we'll see on the next slide. Uh, then we're going to sort the score, and we'll grab 12. This is purely because it's very easy to get 4, 4, 4 uh, on the next page. Um, and that's what, yeah, so that's what the whole thing looks like. That's basically all the code I had to write uh, to allow me to do, write a query and, and, and do some scoring on it. Uh, and so this is what it suggested. Uh, this is the equivalent of, or this is a variation on the query that we did before. Uh, and so I wrote like the scoring function basically of takes uh, it's a little bit of a more. It's a little bit more complicated. So before than the previous query. So before we were getting, uh, we were just counting the topics. This time I was grabbing uh, topics. How many members did they have? How many events have they hosted recently? To kind of go, well, what is it that makes a group interesting? If I see a group, uh, why would I? Why would I join it? Uh, and so I thought, oh, these are some interesting features that that might encourage me. Uh, and we get it gives you back a random score. I expect you wouldn't show that on the app. Uh, this is purely for uh, demonstrative purposes. Uh, and I basically assign like 100 points to each of these. So if you have a lot of members, that's good. If you have recent events, that's good. Uh, and if you have uh, lots of topics in common, uh, then that's also, also good. So all three of those uh, all help. Uh, and then we come up with the top 12. Um, and so this is, this is, this is, the, this is the more um, complicated version of the query. So it's quite, it's, it's, uh, there's more data than, than what I've showed so far. But effectively, if we evolve what we started with, which was there's some topics uh, and there's some groups. Uh, we add in other data that the Meetup API gives you. Uh, we, can, we end up with something similar to this. Uh, and we can start, like, t like the one I was doing at the beginning was, hey, I'm on the events uh, group page. Show me similar groups. Now we're actually saying, well, actually, I'm logged in as a person. Show me some stuff uh, that I should do. Uh, so we're going to go from that perspective. So saying, hey, find, uh, find Mark or, or find whoever, whoever the person who's logged in is. Find what they're interested in. Find some other groups that have those topics. So this is for our group recommendation. Uh, but don't show me the group if I'm already a member of the group. It's not a very good uh, recommendation if you if you do that. Um, and this is typically uh, we've been going across our office checking our checking different recommendation systems and seeing how how well how well we like them. Spotify is quite well liked. Amazon tends to recommend you stuff that you just bought, except it's cheaper uh, than when you bought it. Uh, so that's not a good recommendation. That's like almost a negative recommendation. So uh, this would be the equivalent of, hey, I just joined the, 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 the London Java group. I really think you should join the London Java group. So that's the sort of thing we want to avoid. So we need to be able to take that into account. What have you, uh, what have you just done? Uh, we're then doing some kind of, uh, uh, so that's our first query. So we capture the results. Then we're going to do another query. So it's not quite a subquery. It's kind of connecting, combining, almost combining multiple queries together. So we're, ca we're saying capture it here, get me the other group. 
count how many topics in common we're gonna, we've got, because remember, we're going to use that later. And then uh, this size function uh, basically goes and does a lookup. So we keep statistics uh, of cardinalities. In this case, we can very quickly go and find out how many members there are. So I get the member count as well. So we've got the topic, we've got the members. Uh, capture that, then do another query, which is how many events have they had uh, and this is just in the last 90 days. How many events have there been in the last 90 days? That's going to be our indication of, is it an active group or not? Uh, we get back that, and then we can uh, we return that. So we get the other group, the topics, the members, uh, and the events. Uh, yeah, I, f I forgot that I'd, uh, that I'd broken it down a bit. I always forget that. I was like, I'm going to explain this really well, and then I explain all of it on the first slide. Um, so, so yeah, this was the intention. So uh, I mean, now I've explained it. So find the groups, <laughs> filter out the ones we've already got, uh, get some metrics. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, so then we feed it into Clojure, uh, and so this is only what this is. This is this is what uh, one way of uh, one way of scoring. And obviously, if you had millions and millions of rows, this might not be the most optimal way of doing it. Uh, in this in in this example, there's like maybe 300 things that come back. And so you're like, oh, well, finding the top 10 out of those 300 is not going to be, like returning 300 rows worth of data is not, is not a problem. Um, so you want to do some, you want to do, a, in, in a real application, you probably want to do some filtering of the stuff in the database before you uh, get it back and do this scoring. Um, the reason I've done the scoring in Clojure is because it's, it's just way easier to express it uh, than in Cypher, uh, as you can see. So what we're doing here, um, so this is where we start. So you're, I, if you've got a really good memory, there was a function called score row called, called about 10, 10 slides back. Uh, and it takes in every row that we get back in the, in the result set. Uh, and what it does uh, is, is grabs, is cr uh, creates, gets three scores for those rows. Uh, and we're using a function which we'll have a look at in a second. Uh, but if it were called score item, but effectively we're getting the raw score, so we get the, and we're grabbing out the topics, then the members and the events. So we're just grabbing those scores out. Um, and it looks like this. So this is an example. So this is what, what one of those dictionaries or hash maps looks like. So it gets topics three, members 932, uh, events three. Uh, and then what we're doing is saying uh, how much value we're we going to give to that particular property. Uh, and in this case, I, did, I, was, I just said 100. We'll give 100 points to each. Uh, if you then ran it uh, and you decided, well, actually, the thing that most influences people to join a group is how many recent events there are. So I'm going to weight that one a bit higher. Maybe you stick this up to 200. Um, then what I wanted to do was uh, that if you don't apply any uh, function to it at all, uh, it tends to be that the ones that have really big scores dominate everything. Um, so what I've done instead, um, and I've stolen this from, from, uh, from a, a recommendation library called, uh, written by, a, uh, it's called the Graph Aware recommendation library, and they kind of, it's sort of a Java-based uh, library for doing recommendations on Neo4j. Um, and they've got a function uh, which allows you to kind of do a sort of a log curve. And so uh, up, you kind of get an 80% score, which gives you some of the score. But then after that, it sort of tails off. So, so you don't get completely dominated by the really high scores. Uh, and you can see this, is, this would be quite hard to write in Cypher, but reasonably easy to write in Clojure. And so this is just coming up with a score. So you feed in the numbers, and it goes, hey, here's a score that you can use. Uh, and that, that's, that's an example of what it does. So you get most of the score from the 80%, and then it's kind of diminishing returns as you go up. Uh, and, yeah, and then you get back. So I can show you. So I've got um, a little web app running here. So this is uh, logged in as me. Uh, and this is an example of, um, of like some recommendations for me. And I can go. Uh, for example, like it's saying London Kaggle Meetup, I could click to there. Uh, when I go to the Kaggle Meetup, I've just taken all the queries and just, just put, basically put all the results onto the page. And so it will come up with, hey, here's some previous events that Kaggle did. Here's some similar groups. So this is based on the topics. So these are ones which have similar topics. Uh, so we could go, hey, data scientist, and it will go again. Here's some events. Uh, we've got friends as well. I haven't explained that. We'll do that in a second. Um, and equally, you can click through here. This is not going to work now, but you can click through and see, uh, see the actual uh, group on the Meetup page as well. Um, but let's have a look at events. So events are probably what they really want you to do. So the others are all basically proxies uh, uh, to getting you to go to events. Uh, here's some suggestions of events for me a couple of months ago. Uh, this is how we might choose to model events. So there's, there's other bits of data around events. So I can go to an event, RSVP to an event. Um, 
We haven't talked about this one, but you can be a member of a group. Uh, and then a group can host an event. For example, London Java Group hosts this meetup. Um, and the interesting thing you can do with the events is, so people, when they go on meetup, can, can specify like social media profiles. So they can say, hey, I'm, uh, uh, I've, got the, I've got this Facebook account. And then they can go and look and say, oh, here's your Facebook friends. And I don't know if you've noticed at the top, it'll sometimes go, hey, your friend of a friend is going to this meetup, or your friend is going to this meetup. And in an attempt to say, hey, you can go and meet them by going and watching a talk uh, on the FDA or on, or on Truffle or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, this is like a proxy to go meet your friend. Um, but what is interesting uh, and what is really easy to, to, to work out in, uh, in Cypher is um, you can actually go and work out who are people's meetup friends. Uh, that's, that really sounds like an in-between reference, doesn't it? Friend, meetup friend. Um, and so there's actually a graph hidden in here. Um, it's obviously a bit of, probably a bit of a proxy for a friendship, but what we're saying here is that when you RSVP to an event, so if I RSVP to an event, uh, and Alex RSVP to an event, and let's say that, let's say that we go to it, uh, there's a reasonable likelihood that we might have met each other and perhaps we do we are friends with each other or we know each other or meet up meet up friends we could we could call the relationship if we prefer uh, and so we could go and we could actually go and and, and write that relationship into a into the graph into the actual into the database or into the graph um, and so i've made up i've completely made up a a score a, a scoring mechanism which you don't need to understand because i will explain it uh, effectively the scoring mechanism is Work out whether people are RSVP'd to the same event. Yes, so you RSVP'd yes to the same event. Uh, so Mark and, uh, and Alex both RSVP, RSVP'd yes. So get all the people that RSVP'd yes to the same things as you. Then work out how many other people RSVP'd yes to that same event. So for example here, uh, maybe there's, uh, there's 20 people. And we'll say that if Mark and Alex went to that event and there were 20 other people there, they had a one in 20 chance of meeting each other. If there were only five, we'll say there's a one in five chance. If there were 300, one in 300. And we'll just add them all together and we'll get this completely arbitrary friend score, um, which will be very low. Um, and then, I, then I, the other, only other thing I added on was you have to have gone to five to get the score in the first place. Uh, and yeah, this is our friendship score. Uh, and then we get this. So these are the, my, my de my, me as an example user is pretty terrible uh, because 99% of the meetups that I RSVP to are near for j meetups. So I run the near for j London group. So these are the people who go uh, to the near for j London group. Uh, so we, I've been trying to find like someone more diverse than me every, every time I do, this, uh, do a talk or something similar to this. Um, and it appears that I go to many more <laughs> near for j meetups than anyone else. Um, but effectively, these are now ordered in what, who it thinks I'm most likely to know. So the people on the left, it thinks I'm most likely to know. This is my wife, so it's done a good job there. Uh, and these are, I recognize all these people. These people come to a lot of near for j meetups. So, uh, so it's done a reasonable job of pulling out those. Uh, and this is in the PHP London group. So you can see that people are, people are spread across different groups, even though, even though I've met them somewhere else. Um, so let me, yeah, let me do, I'll just quickly, do, I showed it a little bit already. Um, but you can kind of browse around, uh, and I've effectively got, and it will highlight people who are who it thinks are really good friends uh, in in bold. Um, but we'd actually probably do better if we went if we go and find the near for j page. That's uh, let's see. Here. Um, so this is oh sorry I forgot to explain. So this is the this is the this is the suggested events uh, version as well. So I tried to come up with well what would be a better way of suggesting events. Uh, so they do some of this already. So they suggest, they do friends, but they do Facebook friends or Twitter friends. Uh, so I've taken up, taken these are the people who are, who it found from that potential meetup friend group. Uh, and it will just put them there and say, hey, these people are attending. Maybe you want to go there. Uh, it'll tell you you're in this group. Here's a whole load of ones that you're not in. This is when the event is. Uh, these are how many topics it has in common with you. Uh, and this is how many previous events you've attended. Um, I don't know whether I can get the near for j group to come up. It doesn't appear to be. I think the data set that I've got isn't. Uh, let's have a look. Maybe the F sharp one has anything interesting. And does that one have it? Oh, there we go. So there we go. You see, I've got a lot of friends <laughs> in the near for j group. So there's, there's like a whole load of. So there we go. So you can see that, that that's, there's an example of what it looks like. These are people who have. I, think, I can't remember what I, I set like the score at some bar, and these are people who have been to a lot of near for j events. <laughs> um, and so it's come up with and said, "Hey, I, I think you might be friends. Uh, might be friends with these people." Uh, okay, let's go back to here again. Um, so just quickly to 
to sort of wrap up. Um, so obviously got an application which is doing a bit of Cypher, a bit of Clojure. Um, I think they, work, they seem to work quite well. It wasn't very hard for me to build, uh, to build this application. Uh, I spent most of the time just importing the, importing the data and working out what would the model look like and what queries would be interesting to look at. The actual closure bit probably didn't take, I don't know how many hours. Maybe 10 hours? I'm not sure, maybe less. Um, I think it works quite nicely where, uh, for, where you're doing very data-oriented programming, uh, basically uh, meaning that the actual data that you've got is what is what is interesting. So in this case, I'm building a recommendation, and the most interesting way of making a recommendation is by using the data that, that I've got to make it. So uh, I think it works pretty well for that, where most of your work is uh, is data in some way, either querying data or, or doing some processing on it. Uh, and so the, the way I've been using the two is uh, Cypher seems to work well for expressing, well, what do I want to look up? What am I trying to find? Uh, and exploring uh, what connections there are between the data. Uh, whereas Clojure works really well for once you've got the data, uh, what uh, functions can you then apply to it uh, and massage or manipulate the data into a, into a uh, form that's really nice to display on the page. Um, and so this, the, 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 the uh, approach that I've or demoed for recommending stuff is very different than, uh, than the, the common one that you'll see where it's like, hey, I've got to get a massive Hadoop cluster and I've got to run a Spark job or a MapReduce job or, or whatever it is over that data set. Uh, and typically, you'll be, you'll be doing some sort of global number crunching across the whole data set, trying to find what items are, are pairwise correlated to each other, what, uh, what's the similarity function between them. Uh, and it often drifts down to, well, how do I find what items are similar to each other? Uh, and so the one we've done here is just completely different. It doesn't attempt to do that. Uh, it's trying to sort of narrow in and go and do what we call personalized or local searches around your area of the graph. So, uh, around your neighborhood. So in, this, in the examples I showed, uh, it was looking around me. So Mark is this, this small part of a, of a network of, of data, uh, of, of things that are co uh, connected to each other. What interesting things can we find and what relationships can we create in the graph to help uh, do those searches? Uh, and so it's just very different. It's, it's, it, it, comes up with, it, can, it still comes up with recommendations of suggestions of stuff that you're going to do. Uh, it's just a, kind of a different way of doing it. Um, I've got, I've got, I came up with a load of things that, I, that we could do next, and I did this talk two months ago, and Alex watched me explain exactly the same set of things that I could do, and I still haven't done them. Uh, so if you come and watch it in two months' time, I probably, well, maybe I was still not done them. Um, so another API that, that Meetup has is, uh, is comments, sentiments. So they give you, like, the people make comments on, uh, afterwards of, on Meetups, like, hey, this was really good, or, oh, this was terrible, I'm never going to come again. Uh, and so you could take that and go, uh, and maybe use that in a future suggestion. So if they really liked a, a particular meetup, maybe that means that they would like another one from that group. Um, another thing that I've been playing around with is um, they don't give you, the topics are not related in any way, so they don't say, oh, Neo4j, Cassandra, they are NoSQL or, and MongoDB, uh, and link those together. And if you're interested in NoSQL in general, uh, I can then go and make you suggestions for other databases. There's no link like that. Um, so what I've actually been playing with, rather, it would be cool if there was an ontology of that stuff, but there isn't. Um, but what you can actually do instead is there's clustering algorithms that will go and work out this, uh, like sort of effectively clusters of things that are likely to be similar. Uh, and I've been, I haven't put this into the talk yet, but I've got one which you can kind of see does pull out purely by working out which meetups have these tags in common, uh, can kind of go, ah, I think these, these things all group together. Uh, and so this is quite a it's quite a well researched topic. It's just, it's called, just called uh, effectively if you, if you effectively if you look for clustering, you'll find uh, stuff that you can do there. Uh, we could do some similarity based on descriptions and trying to work out what topics are hidden inside the description. Um, the problem there is that not every meetup uh, explains the description in the same way. Some of them are logistical descriptions. Some of them will exp will talk a lot about the speaker. Some of them will talk about a lot a lot about the topic. Uh, this one did both. Uh, but not everybody is, is as diligent to say, here, here's the speaker, here's the topic, here's some information about them, here's some information about the topic. So it makes it quite difficult to do that. Uh, we could also pull in the social network. We could uh, do some stuff with the location. So perhaps people only like stuff uh, that's in Canary Wharf, so we don't want to go and suggest you something that's over in Westminster. Um, perhaps we have different behavior on days of the week or on the weekend. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, so that's the end of this. Uh, if you want, if any of this is interesting to you and you want to grab it, I guess I can send uh, Alex the slides, uh, or you can. These are the URIs where I've got 
uh, the material that were in the examples. And now I'm stopping you from going to the pub by standing here more. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you.